So we're about to begin our study of calculus. And before we delve into any specific topic or start looking at any specific problems, let's talk about what is calculus in general. So simply put, calculus is the mathematical study of change, or the mathematics of change. How things change over time, over distance, uh, over any quantity, basically. And it's, calculus is used in many different areas, both hard sciences and soft sciences. Areas like physics, engineering, chemistry, medicine, as well as economics, uh, sociology, political science, and this is just to name a few. Now, you could spend three semesters taking Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3, but every single topic contained in Calculus comes back to one of two centrally fundamental problems. So that's what I want to talk about now, these two centrally fundamental problems in calculus. And that's the tangent line problem. Say number one, the tangent, tangent line problem. And number two, the area problem. So let's talk about the tangent line problem first. And let's look at let's look at this in terms of our transition from pre-calculus to calculus. So the tangent line problem. Now let's say let's say in the xy plane, let's look at quadrant one. Let's say we have some function f of x. Okay? And let's say there's two points on this function. Let's use red. Let's say there's a point right here and a point right here. Now, if if this first point, let's call it, uh, I don't know, x1 comma y1, and we'll call this one x2 comma y2. Now, can we find the slope of the secant line or the slope of the line that connects these two points? Well, if you've taken algebra or if you've taken pre-calculus, you should be able to apply the slope formula. So the slope of the secant line is equal to y2 minus y1, oh, y2 minus y1, or the vertical change between the points divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, this is pre-calculus. Can you find the slope of the line through two given points? Now, what the tangent line problem is, well, let's again, let's look at quadrant one in the xy plane, and let's look at the same function, something like, eh, it could be anything. We'll call this function f of x. Now, rather than looking at the slope of the line between two points, what if we have only one point? And we're looking for the slope of the line that is tangent to the graph of f of x. So a tangent line is a line that intersects the curve in one point without passing through, or sometimes it passes through in, in very specific situations. But uh, it's, a, it's a, a line that hits the graph in one point. So let's, let's label this secant line, secant line. Now this word secant has nothing to do with the trigonometric function, the secant function. It's something completely different. So this is a tangent line. Now we can't apply the slope formula directly because we need two points. And we have only one point on this, this, this red line here. We have only one point. So this is problem number one. The tangent line problem. How do we find the slope of a line tangent to a function if we know only one point? And this is calculus. And this is sort of our transition from pre-calculus to calculus. In pre-calculus, it's the slope of the line given two points. In calculus, it's the slope of the line given one point. Okay, so in this class or in any calculus one class we this is, this is where we start in um, this branch of calculus so basically all topics in calculus that relate back to this problem this this tangent line problem 
this branch of calculus is called differential calculus. Differential calculus. And the main fundamental object that we'll be working with in differential calculus is called the derivative. Now we'll get to the derivative a little bit later. We need to establish some fundamental ideas first before we start talking about derivatives. But differential calculus has to do with this tangent line problem. Find the slope of the line through a single point if that line is tangent to a given function. All right, so let's look at number two, the area problem. Now the area problem, so let's scroll down a little bit here. The area problem says, well again, let's, let's look at the first quadrant in the exponent. It doesn't have to be the first quadrant, but just for, for this example, we'll use the first quadrant. Here's our function, any generic function, f of x. The area problem is, if you have two x values, let's say a and b, what is the area bounded between the graph of the function and the x-axis on the interval a to b? Let's say area equals what? So determining the area under the curve on the interval a to b this is the area problem and any topic any problem in calculus that has to do with or, or relates back to this area problem falls under the second branch of calculus called integral calculus integral calculus so Solving for this area either directly or if the problem is something to do that indirectly uh, relates back to this falls under the category of integral calculus. Now in this and, and normally any other calculus one course that you take, uh, usually you'll spend the first three quarters of the semester dealing with differential calculus. That's the tangent line problem. And then maybe the last few weeks or the last month dealing with uh, integral calculus and that's what we're going to be doing this semester okay so that's a brief overview of just this branch of mathematics called calculus now um, we're gonna um, before we start delving into the uh, derivative or the the fundamental object in this branch of calculus called differential calculus or the integral we have to talk about the limit and the limit is our uh, the, the main topic in this first chapter and once we once we have a fundamental understanding of limits then we could start discussing both differential calculus and integral calculus uh, okay so that about does it uh, for this now the next video in the next series of videos I will start talking about the um, specifically <clears throat> the uh, the topic in calculus called the limit